Welcome and welcome to Arcane Wonders and Aquatica. I would like to say uh, welcome to the players at the table here and a welcome to anybody watching the live stream. Thank you for uh, taking some time out of this last day of Gen Con to uh, experience Aquatica by both Arcane Wonders and Cosmodrome Games. Um, this is a game where you are a king of an underwater empire and resources are limited and it's time to expand your empire and become the most prosperous of all the empires under the water. So uh, this is a one to four player game. Uh, we're gonna play it in the four player mode today. And it's a little bit, everything kind of gets thrown at you at once because there's not necessarily a big structure of the turn. Every turn you can do pretty much anything on that turn. So to begin with, what I'd like to do is to just go over the different areas of the board so we know what we're doing there. Uh, oh, well, let's talk about the ultimate goal of the game. The ultimate goal of the game is to earn prosperity points. Now, prosperity points are these numbers that you can see at the top of the screen, at the top of the board with the little seaweed or coral-like shapes next to them. Those are prosperity points. To put them into normal game terms, those are victory points. So what your goal is, is to get as many of those as possible. There are three ways to do that. The first way is to achieve the goals here at the top, which I will go over. The second way is to conquer, then raise and score these lands in the middle of the board. And the third way will be at the end of the game, how many cards do you have in your hand total? So that is the three ways to score points in the game. At this point, going over the board, I'm going to start from the bottom because that's going to be kind of the most useful to you initially. At the bottom of the board, what we have here are additional characters that you can recruit or purchase. Um, you'll see along the bottom, they each have a cost from zero to five. And you pay that cost and then you get to recruit them and then the, uh, the track replenishes and everybody ships uh, down to be one cheaper. In the middle of the game board, we have the locations. So these can be, and we're gonna double click on the first one and I'm gonna go over the features of the locations. And as we play the game, I'll go over all of this in detail again. I just want to get the base information out to you. Um, actually, that's not the best selection. Let's go to the next one over. There we go. That's a good one. So at the top of the card, it has two symbols. The first symbol, the six with the trident next to it, that is the power of this card. You need to generate that much power from your kingdom to be able to conquer this card. The next number is the purchase of this. So it's five gold to purchase this region, this location. So you'd have to generate five gold from your kingdom to purchase this card. Along the side here, these are bubbles. And some of them have abilities that when you, when you use the bubble, you gain the ability. The blank ones are actually their stops. So you have to find a way to get past them so that you can use the next ability and so on. Down here at the bottom, in the lower left, we see those are the prosperity points. If you were to score this location, you would get those prosperity points. In the middle, this thing generates an extra token that you can receive called Wild Mantas. And when you get that, that adds to your abilities in the game. And then this symbol over here shows uh, the type of land. So in this case, it's a shipwreck land. Uh, there are shark fins, there's ruins, and there are volcanic lands. And those are mostly important because some of you each have an ability with your mantas to more easily gain one type of land over the other players. So the blue player gets easier access to the, uh, the shipwreck lands, red gets the volcanoes, um, I'm sorry, red gets the shark fins, yellow gets the volcanoes, and green gets the ruins. So um, 
that is the basic layout of the land card. So normally, this is called the lower row. There is also this upper row, and any land cards that get moved into here actually are one cheaper to conquer. They're feeling neglected, their armies have abandoned them, and they're easy to con easier to conquer. But after that, they just get dumped into the discard pile over here. Then at the top, we have victory goals. So these are things you can do to get an instant drop of points. So like this first goal here, it has an eight with a hand with a little character next to it. That is saying if you have eight character cards in your hand at any one moment of the game, you may then take one of your colored mantas, not a wild manta, and you may flip it and put it there. Now, the first person to do this would of course get eight points, but now you no longer get the use of whatever manta you used, you gave it up. So, and the longer you wait to do that, the less points you're gonna get for having that. So that is the basics and I'll get into this. Uh, uh, well, actually right now is a good time to get into how to get these four different goals achieved. So the first one is, do you have eight cards in your hand? It does not count anything in your discard, just in your hand. The one to the right of that with three sort of chest icons there says, have you scored three locations? What, the moment you score three locations, you could drop a Manta over here and gain some points. This one says, do you have five locations in your player area? So when you get a location, it will slide up here in your player area and there's room for five locations. And the last one is when you've received two wild mantas, you can score that one. There are three ways the game will end. It will end because one player has got a manta in each of the goals, or it will end because there are no more cards in the location deck, or it will end because there are no more cards in the character deck. So that is the ins and outs of the, of the player game, Morton. I know it's a lot of information. I promise I will help you guys out through each turn. So no worries there. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna go over to the green area and I'm gonna talk about what we have here. So on your turn, you get one main action, which is always play a card from your hand and you must do whatever that card says. And then you get as many additional actions as you want. Mantas are additional actions. The bubbles on locations are additional actions. So I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna start with the seahorse here. If you double click or space on it, it will blow up large so you can read it. So the seahorse has the one action that is optional, scout. So what scout means is it's gonna flush all the cards in the lower row, fit as many as it can into the upper row, and then anything beyond that gets dumped in the discard, and then we're gonna refill the lower row with six new locations. So if you don't like what you're seeing or if the other players are gaining too much benefit from what's out there, use a scout, clear that board. Then after that, you gain one power and conquer one location. So no matter how much power you have sitting on your board, you can only conquer when you play a card that says conquer. So that's an important distinction that you'll see once you start uh, raising the locations. So again, scout is the only optional action to be taken. Um, I'm gonna go over to the Legionnaire because it's just basically a bigger version uh, the Legionnaire is gain three power and conquer one location. Now, just as an example uh, to show you how this works, if I look over here, third card over has a power of four. Well, if I play that Legionnaire, well, I only have three power, but if you go up here to my green mantas, there is one that has a plus one power symbol on it. If I flip that at the same time as playing this card, it adds an additional power to the Legionnaire. And now I can go and I can conquer this four cost card. And when you do conquer it, what you're gonna do is place it and it should fall under the board a little bit. 
and you want to get it to the first bubble. And that tells you, okay, that bubble is now available to be used in the future. Um, the other thing is if we're looking at, we might as well look at the wild mantas real quick since I brought them up. Um, we've got the one that's plus one power, but you've got this weird one here that's plus two power, but only versus, in this case, the green ruin cards. That's the one that each of you has that is unique. Red has one that is plus two versus shark fin cards. Uh, yellow is plus two versus volcano cards. And blue is plus two versus shipwreck cards. Then we've got one here that says plus one coin. So when you take a buy action or a recruit action, you can flip that over to gain one coin so that you can add that to your total. And this guy up here is interesting. This is called a raise action. And what it allows you to do is, let's say for some reason, I really didn't want to use that coin. I could flip the raise one Manta. I could come over to the, my location on the player card and I could push it up one without getting the coin. Now this isn't really like, that might not be a good play for this card, but let's say I pull up this guy right here. So for some reason, he is right here right now. I'm blocked. I can't do anything about that. But if I flip the raise one Manta, now I can go and push him up one. And now I'm ready to take a raise two action in the future. So that's what the raise action is good for. And I'll, we'll get into that in bigger detail here shortly. Um, so that is how Mantas work. And let's move back. And here we've got uh, Blue Waters Agent, which is recruit one character. Now he doesn't give you any gold, but you can always get the character in the first slot for free. That character is always going to be a zero cost. But if you flip the plus one uh, Manta over when you played him, you'd gain one gold and you could do that. Or since I've got the example up on the green board here, Let's say I played Blue Water's Agent. I want to use this bubble, so I slide it up, which gives me plus one gold. Now I flip my Manta, which gives me another plus one gold. And now I can purchase up to a three cost character, or a two cost, sorry, two cost. Um, obviously, in this example, that's not a great thing because you could just buy it cheaper. But when you want to pay more for something, that's how you do it. Uh, the next guy would be the Sea Lord. He is a gain one and buy one location. So you can't buy characters, but you can buy locations with him. And again, you can do all that crazy shenanigans of generating extra coins to help buy more expensive locations. Um, the next one is the Wave Teller. So this has an option. You can either score two locations, which is what that blue chest is, or you can um, raise two. Now, whenever you see a raise two like that, uh, whether it's on a Manta, whether it's on a card, it can be either raising one land, two bubbles, or raising two different lands, one bubble each. And that's the wave teller. Um, and always, when you have the ability to do an action, you must do it. So if you have two lands that are ready to score, you must score both lands. Um, also, one other quick thing here. If we go back to the greens player board, this location has that wild manta symbol. When the location is fully raised, and what that means is it's all the way up and there are no more bubbles on it, this is considered a fully raised location. You can then take a wild manta and add it to your manta supply. So in this case, you'd get a raise two wild manta from the, from the mantas over in the top of the board and add it to your personal supply. So there is definitely a value to getting to those. The last card here in these six is going to be the Matrona. So the Matrona is very specific. This is the reset card for you. So it says all, and then it's got a, an icon of a character with an up arrow. That is the... Uh, symbol for returning a card from your discard. So what Matrona says is pick up all the cards from your discard, unflip all your mantas, 
and then this character can't be discarded, so she stays in your hand. And so that is everything that happens with that card. So the first thing I'd like everybody to do is if you hold down on the shift key and then click and drag a square around the decks that are next to your player boards, and in the case of green, you're just gonna grab these six here. Uh, you're gonna drag them down slowly uh, towards your um, bottom of your screen, but not all the way to the bottom. And then your screen will glow and you just drop them into your hand. And that's that. Now we're gonna do one more thing here. You guys receive a seventh card. And there's one of the ones we need. Give me a second to pull them out here. There's, oh, nice. Uh, actually, we don't want him. I apologize. Don't want her. So in a basic game, the rules state that you're going to just play with the first four kings. And in the upper right-hand corner, they have numbers to tell you uh, which number of king they are. So in this case, these are the four we're going to play with. So I'm going to describe them, although I need to ask a quick question of the players. Um, which of you has most recently been in the ocean? Possibly me, uh, about a week and a half ago. Anybody beat a week and a half? That's what we got. All right. Ah, uh, okay, so you, sir, have the honor of being player number one. So you're gonna get king number one. Now let me describe how he works. So Kai the Nimble, he has a symbol of a character and then a coin with the slash through it. Basically that says you can get any character you want for free from the character recruit area. Then after you've played that action, Kai goes into the box. For the cases of playing on Tabletopia, he's just going to get shoved to the side and he's no longer in your hand. So you, uh, blue player, may go ahead and add him into your hand. And we're going to go around uh, clockwise on this one. So the red player is going to get Xander the Usurper. So Xander does a whole bunch of little actions. So Xander says, first, you're going to raise a card, raise a location card, one bubble. Then you're going to pull one card out of the discard and put it into your hand. Then you're going to unflip one Manta, and then you're going to score one card. And scoring is when a card is fully raised, you get to pull it out and drop it on top of your board in a pile. And that is what makes it worth victory points. When a card is just on your board, it is not worth any victory points. You need to get it to the score area, which if you look at the top of your player board, there's a section with the chest icon. That's your score area. So go ahead and grab that. All right. Does he uh, go yellow. into my hand? I'm sorry? Does he go into my hand? Yes. OK. You get, you get uh, red gets him into your hand. Next one goes to the yellow player. And this is Mara the Shady. I, I like her. She's easy. Um, basically. She says you can conquer any location with a shipwreck icon for free. So right now she's actually really awesome because most the two shipwreck locations out there are kind of expensive to get and she could just grab them in the first round. So really basic, really simple, but definitely powerful until you run out of shipwreck locations and you're sitting there wondering when it, where they are in the deck. All right, and Green, you are going to be playing with Saul the Great. So Saul the Great is also very unique in terms of first you're going to unflip all your mantas, then you have the option to scout, and lastly you get to play a whole other character from your hand. So in that way, he allows you to basically reset the board, reset yourself a little bit, and then play a character of your choice once you see how everything pans out. So go ahead uh, and add Saul to your hand. All right, so um, I realize I just dumped the entire rule book on your laps, but I am gonna go step by step, especially in the first couple of rounds to really help you guys out. So the first thing we do, since blue is the first player, 
Uh, if you would be so kind as to pick a card that you would like to play as your first play, this is your main action. Okay. Awesome, a legionnaire. So you've got three power right now. It is possible for you to get up to six power if you wanted to chase down, like this third card over is a shipwreck card and you are particularly good at knocking those out. The yeah. way, if you wanted this shipwreck card, what you would do is you would flip over the Manta that is plus one power and the Manta that is plus two versus shipwrecks. And now you have six points of power you can now conquer the shipwreck card. And then it gets placed and the boards are a little fidgety right now um, because uh, how the graphic overlays, but yeah, you put it up to the first bubble. And now one important note, you can never use a bubble from a card on the card it came from. So this is a raise two bubble. You're not gonna be mm -hmm, able to use mm -hmm. that until you okay. have one or two other cards sitting here. Okay. And then this goes into your discard, which is over here. <clears throat> and if you just drop it there, it should it should find its home. And that is your first action. Congratulations. Red, Great. you are up. Hey, John, quick question. Yes. The wild mantas I get when I score the whole card, when I raise the whole card far enough. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, what color is asking that? Blue, sorry, this is Pete asking for it, color blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you look at your board real quick, yeah. when this card is here, this is the position called fully raised. There are no bubbles available. Immediately when that happens, you then gain that Manta. Got it. Okay, thank you. All righty, red. All right, uh, I wanna scout. Okay. Um, are you so you actually want to flush this uh, area and get new cards? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. I don't know if that's a smart move or not. Nope. But. Uh, hey, I like a bold first turn. So see how there's a line underneath? This mm -hmm. is the line of travel for the cards. So it kind of gives you an idea of when you flush, what got thrown away? Well, the card closes to the edge because there isn't enough room to put him in these four slots. And then we resupply the bottom row. And now you're a scout, so you've got plus one power, or well, you've got one power um, to use to conquer a location. And if you want, you can gain additional power. There's only one red fin up there, but he is an eight cost. And even mm -hmm. though he's so because he's in the top row, he is actually minus one power. That's still at seven. That's that's hard to get to in turn one. Yeah. Um, so right now, you can generate up to a total of two power, but you can only conquer one land. So at this moment, realistically, there are only three one-cost cards here that you can gain access to. So... Um, pretty much they are, this guy right here is worth two points. Yeah, so that's the one I think on I'll what take. you played, I would grab him. Yeah. And now because there are no bubbles on him, he actually goes fully raised right now. Okay. And that's in the far left? Uh, whichever spot you want. It's, there's no real rule for it. Okay. Thank you. What happens, just a quick question, Red, what happens if you click this little box here? The where your where the white hand is? Yeah, where the where the uh, there's a little rectangle. Yeah, um, it's uh, it gives me a lock symbol if I click up top here, and if I click on the card, it just kind of lights up. Okay. I don't know. Never mind. Moving okay. on. Sorry, it was just suddenly I just noticed that and I'm like, maybe that does something to help make the boards a little more usable. Got it. Okay, cool. Totally good. Okay. Uh, yellow. It is your turn. All right, I'm going to play my Legionnaire. 
uh, which will let me conquer. That gives me three power. Three power, and you can conquer one territory. Which what's what's in your mind? Uh, yeah, that one only takes three power. So hooray! And that's gonna be it for me. And then it just goes up to your first bubble, and life is good. And green, it is finally your turn. I believe that I will play the Legionnaire as well. Okay. And I think I will get this guy here. Nice. Okay. Going to give you a little combat power. And then he can just go up on your discard up here. Okay. Like so. Okay. Uh, Blue, we are back around to you now, sir. Blue Water's agent. Are you putting any money into it, or are you just taking a researcher? Oh, that one is the raised one. This is your coin. There you go. The diplomatic crab. Now that goes into your hand. And then we, everybody slides down. And we have the Meg. Oh, my favorite card. <laughs> Totally, totally ridiculous, but I like him. What the Meg does is it gives you three uh, power and a conquer one, just like a Legionnaire, but then it says all other players must discard a character from their hand. So just the friendliest of cards. All right, go red. Also going to recruit. Blue water agent. Are you going with uh, a diplomatic crab? Yeah. Awesome. And then I have to flip uh, one of these, right? You have to flip the one coin manta there. Okay. And then blue water's agent goes in the discard. Is that here? Yep. And uh, just a little tabletopia trick. If you just pick it up and hold it, the card underneath will change colors. And then when you drop it, it will automatically drop onto it. So if you okay. want to try that, you got to hold still, just hold still. Boom. Cool. There you go. Make it a little easier to manipulate. All right. Fire away yellow. What do we got? All right. I'm going to play the Sea Lord. Nice. Time to buy some land. Yeah, I'm going to flip my coin Manta and bump up this card, which will also give me a coin. Awesome. You got it figured out. So that's three, which will let me buy this card. Here. Oh, beautiful. That is a play I would totally make. Love it. OK, now there is one more thing. So technically, you have unlimited additional actions to a point. So if you look at this card, this symbol right here is return one character from your discard to your hand. So at this moment, you've played this card, and he has now gone to your discard. So there he goes. So now you have two cards in your discard. If you wanted, you could raise this tile up one more right now while it's still your turn, and you could pull one of the two cards out of your discard. I'm OK, I think. I think so. OK, no problem. And if you suddenly found a need to have five gold, you could also do that at the beginning of your turn. You get somebody out of the discard, then you could later use it as five gold, and woohoo! So there we go. Uh, green, you are up. All right. I think I'm going to play Seahorse. Nice. I'm not going to use the scout action. Skipping the scout, so you've got con uh, gain one power and conquer. So and then far. I have two with my land as well. Yep, that'll take so you to three. So I'd like to, not this one, this one. Yep. OK, so you need to raise this card one bubble, showing you used up that two. And now this, when you have a card that's ready to score, you can use this chest icon to score it. So that's valuable for future. OK. All right, anything else, Red? Um, I think that's it. Okay. 
Go blue. All right. Hey, John, what is the what are what are the chest icons that the wave teller gives you do again? Uh, it allows you to score two cards. So remember oh, okay. how I said get this card fully raised. You can, mm -hmm. if you have up to two cards that are already raised mm -hmm. fully, you can then score them, moving them up here on top of your board into your uh, treasure okay. pile. Okay, so it's another action that we have to do. Yes. Is the, chest, the chest is a scoring action. Okay. Yeah, because the cards on your board aren't worth anything in terms of prosperity points. Right. Uh, let's see, I guess I'll take, um, I just like the looks of this one better, I'll buy, I'll use that what is it, the Sea Lord? Sea the Lord. Sea Lord, you've got one coin, but that's a zero cost, so you can just grab it. Yeah, I don't have any other access to coins, so that's good. So. I see, we're limited on what how many locations we can get to, obviously. Yeah, you have only a maximum of five. Mm -hmm. But once you have all five, then you technically qualify for that uh, uh, victory uh, goal. Up do we do top. any... Yeah, sorry, John. Do we do anything to score that one point that I just got, or? Uh, you can't. He's not scored yet. He's fully raised, but now you need to use that wave teller to move him from fully raised. Uh huh. To score. Up to there. I see. I see. Score. Okay. So, um, so right now he just kind of sits there until you're ready to to actually score him. Got it. Now, Thank if you. you're if you're feeling limited on your options. Always remember, Matrona resets your options. OK, red. I'm uh, going to play the Sea Lord and also take this, uh, this one here. Going with the budget land. Excellent. <laughs> and this starts? Technically, um, the idea here is there are little bubbles like there's a little curve there that shows the left side of the card okay and then the the coin so this didn't cost any coins and i gained a coin I, that just disappears right yep the coin goes away did we did somebody buy this character or did it get accidentally grabbed i think someone bought this character mm. oh and i must have forgotten to finish my there we go sorry about that Oh, Anglefish. That one's nice because once uh, it allows you to, if somebody buys it, it allows you to get a card out of the, the uh, discard for free. So, all right. I believe that's the red player's turn. So any gold you don't use in a turn is just thrown away. It does not carry over round to round. So go yellow. All right, I'm gonna play Mara the Shady. Which will what? take this. That's obnoxious. This one. But good. Good move. And that's it for me. That's it. Okay. All right. Green. All right. Let me think just a second because I was going to grab that card. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yep. Somebody took your stuff. All right, I think I'll play a blue water agent, and I have two coins with this land up here. Okay. So I could take either one of these, I guess. Yep. And this goes right into my hand? Yep, goes into your hand. That okay. allows you to conquer two territories in one turn, but you do have to have the power from other sources to make that happen. Okay. All right. Uh, did you account for the two coins on the card yet? Oh, you got to no, raise just, that. Just now I did. Okay. To use up the bubble. There you go. All right. And now, just so you know, if you really desperately need two coins your next turn, you could flip your raise one manta to get it past the bubble. Then you could use it for the two coins. There's. There's nothing saying you have to stop at one bubble rise as long as you're able to use or bypass whatever you can't use. So, okay. All right. Thanks. No problem. Go blue. All right. I'll break out the first king and uh, I'm going to use him to grab the anglerfish. Nice. So that goes into your hand. And then this king is just going to go off to the side of your player because he doesn't get to come back. 
Okay, thank you. No problem. There you go. Thank you, Yellow. Ah, the other Meg. Oh, important note, there are only ever two of any character card in the character deck. So you're seeing both Megs there on the table. There's only one other angler fish in there and so on and so forth. Go red. So if I were to play the wave teller, what, what exactly would happen? Both of these would you leave would my board? You would score both of these so they would both go up here into your scoring area. All right, that's what I'm going to do. OK. So then you just pull them and drop them up there, and they should auto-orient as long as you're right here. Right up. Oh, sorry. Nope. I got too helpful. Sorry about that. No, no, you're good. Come on. Oh, right. You got to hold and pause. It'll change color, and then it pops in. Sorry. OK. Hey, John, I, sorry, quick question. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no. uh, oh, shoot. What was I going to ask? <clears throat> oh, oh, bubbles on the cards. Uh, you said that you've got to be able to use it. If it has something on it, you have to be able to use it before you raise past it. Can you raise past a bubble that you haven't used? Um, only if you use a raise action, like, so you've okay, got the okay. raise. That makes sense. Yep. Or like you've got that raise too. So let's say you used a purchase action, then you could use this gold on this middle card. Then you could use this raise too to raise it too, which would finish the card off and to be fully raised. You'd collect your Manta incidentally. But then you could raise this card again to score this card and get the mm -hmm. set of points put up there. And then okay. you could use this to gain a free character from the bottom row. So there's there's that's a big, nice, beautiful chain. So wow, right, right, right. Got it. Because yeah, that that's just I like that card. <laughs> so how, how did the scoring work then? So what, what exactly happened now that I scored those two? So now at the end of the game, they count as victory, as prosperity points for you. OK, and so, equal to the value they had printed on the card, yeah? Yep, equal in the bottom left corner. OK. And I know there are little score trackers down here. In the, in the normal game, you're not required to tell players what your score is. So uh, that information is relatively secret. All right, yellow, what you got? All right, so this is going to be a bit of a turn. So, Woohoo, I'm excited. What right, do we got? So I'm going to pump, bump that up. OK, so you get to pull one character out of your discard right now. And it's any character of your choice, so whatever you want. So and it goes into your hand. It's going to be the Sea Lord. And then I'm going to play the Sea Lord. So that gives me one and a buy. I'm going to bump that to three. OK. So that's four coins. I'm going to use this to bump all the way down to here. OK, so I'm going to pause you. Don't lose your train of thought, but bear with me. Sure. So you have just unlocked that Manta, right? And yep. I believe it's a plus two coin Manta. Yep. So I'm going to grab it from the supply and I'm going to bring it over to you. This Manta could be used immediately to gain two more coins. You could just flip it right now, get two more coins. Perfect. That is the plan. So I'll okay. do that. Or you can use this card over here to gain two coins, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, I use the Manta, so that'll give me two coins. So that's a total of six, which will let me uh, five or one. Oh, no, 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 the one under there is three. Sorry, yeah, six is correct. So I will buy this location. Nice, that's a monster, and that's it for me. Now, do you? Oh, never mind. You're you're going for something. I don't mean to, <laughs> don't mean to interfere. No problem. Okay. Go green. OK. When do the lands refresh? Uh, when somebody scouts. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> are you uh, are you such a person? Uh, I am not. I have well, I could with my king. I might hold on to that for a second yet. I think I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to play this wave teller. And if I move this up too, I can score it with this one, right? Yep. So that would score. And don't forget to move your uh, one with the score icon up one. And now it is fully raised, ready to be scored in the future. OK. And I think that's it. OK. All right, let's go blue. Yep, I got to remember to unmute. I will play the angler fish and grab this card from the discard there. Nice. <laughs> How do I rotate that? Uh, Q and E keys will rotate. All right. And let's see, tuck it in there correctly. And now a question for you. Um, I want to do some raising. OK. I think. Um, well, if I want to use the, that's what I was thinking. If I want to use the two raise bubble here, can I just raise this one that I just brought in uh, once to get to the character part, or do I need to use both raise actions? You have to be able to use both the raise actions. Okay. So it would, unfortunately, it would jump you down to the empty bubble, which would be terrible. Well, yeah, except well, that not, I feel like right. I'm falling. It wouldn't be terrible, but. Yeah, I feel like I got to start scoring some stuff. So I'm going to go for that. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Thank All you. right, red. All right, I'm gonna play the game three, and uh, I'm three here. and flip the manta for four to be able to grab this one, right? Yep, you got it. Oh, the lands are empty, so empty. And then, <laughs> sorry, am I am I placing it right on the board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I slide it just slightly, but yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's the OCD in me. Just <laughs> don't worry about it. That's why my job is to make sure all the products fit and work right. <laughs> so, um, okay, uh, let's go yellow. Right. Uh, play the seahorse and scout. What? Why would there be scouting? <laughs> all right, let's see what you got. Ooh, that's a nice one. All right, you got a, you've got one power right now. There's a three, a six, a three, a seven, a four, and a one power card in the lower row. So do you have any way to increase your power? Yes, you do. You could get three there. There's a fourth one over in your mantas. And if you're going after something with a volcano, you actually have a six power. Ah, oh, so close to this monster here. So close. Wait, wait, wait. Can we? Uh, darn. Yes. Yes, we can. Would you like a chain to know how to get that uh, oh, seven yeah. plus card? I see. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. It, go for it. Make it happen. Make sure that's the right thing, but I'm, that's probably right. All right. Oh, sorry. I just get excited for the chains. No. I listen that. to me for overall game strategy. <laughs> I, I think that's probably going to be pretty good. Um, Let me. Take a look at that seven cost. That is a nice seven cost. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. All right, so I've got one. I can do this to add to making it three. Whoa, sorry. No worries. Uh, I can flip uh, my plus two Manta to make it five. I'll use my bump one Manta to bump this one up to here. And then I'll use this, actually, yeah, yeah. And then I'll use this one again to make it eight. Perfect. Slight overkill. Excellent play. Um, and then grabbing that. And then I will score the five cards goal. On the board, yep. OK, so to do that, you have to pick one of these four colored mantas, whichever one you like the least. And you're going to go drop it on the five card slot. It can be a manta that is flipped or unflipped. 
doesn't matter. Perfect. All right, and that's it for me. Thanks. Awesome. Good play. And welcome hey. to A Prosperity Points. <laughs> hey, John. Yes. Um, when I cleared that land on my last turn, I think I was supposed to get a Manta plus one gold Manta. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I completely forgot. Um, yeah, let's get that going here. Uh, plus one wild Manta coming your way. There you go. Thank you, sir. No problem. And I believe it is Green's turn. Okay. Um, what do we got left here? So if I play the Sea Lord. Uh-huh. You got one coin. I got one from this Manta. Okay. And I think that's two. You're at two coins right now, but you do have a another Manta you could flip for three coins if you wanted. Although that doesn't really benefit you. So two is two is the target. I'm going to take this because this looks interesting. Yep. So the way those bubbles work just for everybody is the they say you get plus three towards that particular type of land. So plus three power towards the volcanic lands. And then after you've achieved that ability, you would get plus three power towards uh, the underwater ruins. And there we go. All right, blue. What do we got? All right, I'm going to flip my one ray, one raise manta to bump this card bubble up to two coin. Nice. And use that to buy this. Wait, wait, wait. What card did you play to initiate a land purchase? Ah, sorry, I didn't. No problem. Um, you always, you always have to have a main action that initiates a purchase. Yeah, I'll have to use the diplomatic crab then. Um, so there, you get one coin. And you can still use the other two. Yeah, which I'll do because I wanted to raise that one. Okay. To get to scoring position. All right. So in that case, you're not using the the raise. Oh yeah, yeah. you would have had to use the raise one crab to make that work. Yeah, that's the raise, not, not nope. a coin. You yep. played it. You played it properly, but now you get a plus one coin wild crab, which I will bring down to you. All right. I was trying to get to where I could uh, use the Matrona for something, but that's cool. Yep. Well, now you have a plus one coin crab. Or coin manta. Woo. Yeah, thank you. All right. Go red. You need some, some land to score. So red is just going to oh, use the. Sorry, just just realized I was muted. Um, what what is the first symbol on Matrona do exact again? All uh, you pull all the cards out of your deck, um, and put them back into your hand. So all the cards in your discard go back into your hand. Sorry. Okay. Not out of your deck, but your discard goes back to your hands. Then you unflip the mantas, and then. Uh, um, and then you put the Matrona back in your hand and your turn is done. So for all purposes, yellow, you can probably go ahead because I don't believe you're gonna do anything that will affect yellow's does, play. Does that score the eight, eight players in hand, eight characters in hand? Ah, it does. As long as you have eight cards in your hand when this is all said and done, what are you missing? Or do you only have seven, Roos? 
where I'm sorry, seeing... muted me again. Yeah, I've only got seven. Oh, okay. and yeah, nope, not yet. You need that. You need to buy one character card to make that happen. Okay. And from the people watching, I want to put out a special hello to Dawn and the fine people at Game Annex. Thank you for watching me on this uh, wonderful game of Aquatica. Great. Um, so I'm going to bump this one here, which will score the card next to it that's finished. Yep. So that'll go up to the top. Good. And I'm going to use this power, which will give me a freebie free worker. from the character row. What would you like? I would like one of those megs. Nice. Take that one. Uh, you're not going to take the expensive one and make a cheaper one for somebody else. No. Uh, oh, there's the other angler fish. And then I am going to play my Matrona, which will draw my cards back. That'll pull all your cards back. And if you hold shift and draw a box around them, you can select them all at once. And then you drop Matrona back in your hand. And I don't know if I should tell you how many cards are in your hand once you do that. Oh, yeah, there are eight. Yeah, I'll be also doing that. All right. Yeah, the Mantis is flipped back over, right? Yeah, the Mantas are all reset. Mm. Un unflipped is the game term. That's it for me. All right. Green. All right. I'm also going to play Matrona. So it's a Matrona party. Yeah. And then you just hold down shift and then click and drag a box and you'll be able to select all those at once. There you go. All right, since you're matrona -ing, are you uh, going for points? Yep, I've got the eight cards. All right, so you'll get the five points there. Uh, you cannot give up a wild manta. You must oh. give up one of your color. All right. It must be one of your favorite children that you give up. There you go. All right, blue. All right, I'll scout. Or I will, yeah, I'll use it to scout. But before I do that, well, can I? There's no fear in this one. Okay, I'll scout first. Okay. Um, so these go up here. Yep. Become one cheaper to conquer. And then we get six cards laid out along the lower row. What do we got? Ooh, we got a couple of juicy ones here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pick up the card here with, uh, it's free to me. There's, I get one conquer trident and this one only costs one, but it's one cheaper. So yep. it's free. Completely free. Um, that slots me there. So I get to put a manta up on the track for yep. having all my slots. Which one do you at, want to abandon? Uh, I got to see which ones these are. Um, Maybe the one trident. I'm not really big on the trident way of doing things. Okay. And that was here, right? Yep. These guys were flipped. Okay. Um, and let's see. I think that's all I can do. I'm good. I, Thanks. I believe that's a full action. Thank you. Go red. All right. Um... I am going to play the Legioner. That's three. And flip this Manta here to get five to grab this one up here. Nice. Somebody gave you a discount. Yes, thank you, Pete. 
All right. All right. Let's go yellow. Sorry, it was muted. Um, I saw the hand moving, so I wasn't too worried. <laughs> I am going to play this Meg. So I get three conquer power. Oh, everybody, he's being your friend. Everybody else but him has to discard one character right now. And I'm also going to use my bump, uh, use my bump thing to bump this one up. And then uh -oh. plus two versus volcanic, or I'm sorry, shark fin, plus two versus shark fin. So I don't actually want to do that. I, yeah, right now that one can't be used actually. So sorry. Um, no I will just take this one. Just with the three. And that'll be it for me. Okay. All right. John, quick question. What are these last two goals? What are up here? Um, score three locations, meaning put them in your location treasure pile, and have two mantas, wild mantas, in your hand. Great, thanks. No problem. OK, uh, Green, what you got? All right, I'm going to try this grabber. The grabber. And I have three against a volcano up here on my land. OK. So which would allow me to get this one for three yep then this moves up correct yes and then i have three against yep yeah that is awesome one. that is an awesome way to play that card i'm gonna do this one excellent usage of the grabber congratulations on that thank you and then that fully raises that card that had the right there. So now that one's fully risen and can be scored when you have a scoring icon. Nice. Okay. Good play. Thanks. So, okay. So John, the, the double the double conquer location from the grabber let him do just that, grab two locations on a turn. That's exactly what it does. That's cool. All right. So, uh, there's there's one more grabber. He's only one coin. Yeah, uh, pretty straightforward using my Matrona there. Um, okay. Any other actions you're throwing into the mix, or is that it? I let's see. Well, I can't go buy anything because I don't have anything that triggers that. So I've got some coins available, but I can't do anything with them. So okay. that's it. And I'll I'll put my mint up on the. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I'll dedicate the. Uh, so. I'll dedicate the one raise. Actually, sorry, the two tried to the track up there. Okay. All right, go red. All right. Uh, play the crab, and I'll buy the other grabber. Nice. <laughs> All the grabbers. All right. I believe red, if you're done, we're on to yellow. Yeah. I'm done. Sorry. Okay. No problem. No problem. Go yellow. <clears throat> and you are muted if you're having any questions. You don't need to okay. unmute. I'm just letting you know. Gotcha. Sorry about that. I will play Blue R's agent and take this researcher. Nice. And that's it. So here's something a bit. Well, actually, at this point, even these actions, like this turtle, the treasurer, where it says you can raise one location fully, and then all players score one. Yes, it sounds like a benefit, but when people are racing to get five cards in their board, 
and you force them with the turtle to score them, it's a it's actually it's kind of a double edged sword that way. So something interesting with uh, these cards in general, if they have an ability that affects other players, it might be a benefit. But like the researcher, uh, yeah, she'll raise one location of yours or up to three of yours. All other players must raise something if it's a bad time for them. Well, that's that's just too bad. It's still got to be raised. So, all right, where are we at? Yellow done? Uh, I believe yep. we're on. Okay. I'm going to play the Legioner. Okay. And I'm going to get this card. Nice. Which gives me the five. So I need to get rid of your least favorite Manta. Ugh. <laughs> I love them all equally. Uh huh. That's the problem. <laughs> you Oops. need to replace them with wild Mantas. That's this um, one down here. Yeah, I, I didn't mention this earlier, but I better mention it now. You can only score a goal location once. Okay. All right, so I'm good. And All the right. reason there are five slots up there is because there is a fifth player expansion in the works right now. Okay. Okay, go blue. Nice. All right, so since somebody has purchased the anglerfish, I'm going to do something that is just specific to Tabletopia. Oh, no, I'm not. There are no cards in the discard. But all future cards that we would normally put in the discard, I'm just going to spread out here on the left side of the board to help make it easier. Otherwise, you're fidgeting, fumbling through a deck, and it's kind of cumbersome. So all right, uh, that is blue. Go red. All right. Uh, give me a second, sorry. No worries. It is a teach and play. There's no pressure at all. I'm just going to play the Sea Lord and buy this one. Nice. OK, yellow. I'm going to play the researcher, and I'm going to bump this one up three. OK, everybody else needs to bump one location up one. And that will give me a plus two attack manta. OK. And so I think I, I now have two wild and now you can go score the two wild mantas slot. Did you say one location up one or each location up one? One location up one. All right. And that's it for me. Okay. And just so you know, with the researcher, it has a raise three option. It can be raised one card three or raised three cards one or one two and one three. Any variation as long as there's a total of three bubbles that get raised. So sounds good. All right. Green, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna play the wave teller. This allows me to score two. Yes. So okay. two cards that are fully raised, you can now put them into your score pile. This one is fully raised. I just couldn't get it to go up any further than that. No worries. Yeah, it's uh, I yeah, the graphics. We'll work on it. <laughs> for the future. Okay. All right. All right. Um Got it. Okay. 
blue, blue. Uh, yep uh wave teller and i'll score this one which okay. if you could break me out that manta wild uh, manta one core are, manta hang on hang on you should have received that manta when it was fully raised so okay i've got two I see very much that you should have two so let me go get you the other one you have two plus one coin manta and that means i need to put one up on the track up here for having more than there you go and you had two years before i did right he uh, should okay thank you yeah no problem yeah thank you definitely I thought they had to score them to get those. Okay. Um, no, no, just when they're fully raised. All right. So that's all I'm doing is scoring those two guys there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Red. All right. I'm going to play the wave teller and raise this one two. Okay. And then I can fully raise this one, yeah? Yep. Fully raise it right now, which gets you... A plus two power manta, I will go bring that. Then if you wanted, you could use that one uh, with the chest icon uh, and use that to score the one you had just fully raised. Yeah, I'll do that. So then you'll put that up to your fully raised pile. And this one is, or your scored pile, that'll go up to your score. Not that one. Not this one. The um, yeah, sorry. This guy. But now that this guy is fully raised, you gain an additional manta. You gain a raise one manta, which I will go grab for you. Excellent. All right. Now I should like to point out two things. One is. You now have three cards in your scoring pile. So if you wanted, you could throw one of your colored mantas in the first slot of score three locations. And you also have two uh, wild mantas in your hand. You could use another colored manta if you wanted to grab those three points there. I'm gonna yeah do these, um, the top one here. Uh, yeah. You and it needs to be a wild? No, it needs to be uh, one of your colored mantas. Okay. The ones that are your color, sorry. I'm going to throw this one up there. All right. And I'm going to flip it over so we can see it's your manta. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And did you want to score for your wild mantas while you were at it or hold off for now? I'm going to hold off on that for now. No problem. At this point, you don't gain, you don't lose any points by waiting further on. So. Yeah, they both were three points, so I thought I might as well wait. That's not a bad call at all. All right. Uh, and with that, we're on to yellow. So I'm going to play my wave teller and score these two cards. Okay. And that will give me three in the pile. So I will put my Manta over here for the five points. Okay. So gentlemen, we have one player with a Manta in each goal area. We are now into end game phase. And what that means is you each get one more turn, including the person who brought us to this point being the yellow player. Um, important things to remember, if you're having trouble finding things to do, Matrona always putting cards back into your hand does give you one point per card in your hand at the end of the game. So uh, I believe Green, you are up. Okay, I need to do yes. something I didn't do. I Many do have, points if you can. <laughs> I have three cards in my scoring area and I missed it and it was totally my fault. Can I go ahead and score? Yeah, by all means. The Sorry. moment you achieve it, as long as it's like effectively on your turn, you want to take care of that but yeah yeah that's my five. i thought that was a five but it's a three no worries. um i will now this will be my last turn this is your absolute last turn so whatever you can do to make points happen uh, I'm sorry just to make sure i understood the the scoring for that one so that needs to be three where three in your location pile here so yeah you actually have it red was that yeah yeah 
but uh, yeah. for green, uh, doesn't it say two on that pile? Or am I mistaken? For green, let me check. He's not. He's not got his stack fully here. Ah, okay, he's gotcha. Got three there. So. Thank you. Sorry, that's why I was confused. No Cheers. Sorry, green. Oh no, you're fine. Um, so I'll go ahead and just bring my cards back, I guess. Okay. So John, do locations on our map do anything for us at the end of the game? No, they don't create any benefit for you. Ah, all right. Well, couple couple turns shy of being able to do anything else, so I'm just grabbing what I can by bringing some cards back. All right, and I'm done. Okay. Uh, going to blue? Yeah. Sorry, I already went. I played the Matrona and grabbed my cards. It's all, all right, I could do to right. glean some more points. All right. And going to red? Yeah, I'm also going to play Matrona. Uh, I'm going to score this one now, which I can do still, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, wait, Matrona, yes, you can absolutely score that. And then I can bring all my cards back, which I think gives me eight in my hand. Or actually, yeah, because Matrona doesn't discard, right? Yeah, Matrona doesn't leave your hand. OK. And so I will score uh, this one as well, right? Is that correct? Uh, yes. For the eight points, absolutely. Um, it is being brought up uh, stream-wise that, and I'm not going to change it, but technically, the uh, the green would have had the three uh, location scores before the yellow, but you guys don't need to change. Well, if you want to, um, there you go. Thank you. Thank you for the generosity. Oh, thanks. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Yellow, what are you doing for your final turn? I uh, used Matrona and just took the cards back. Got it. Okay, so we are now at the end game. Woohoo! Um, if you double click on these little score adjusters, you can use them to help you math it out. You're going to add the total value of all the scored lands, scored locations the total value of your mantas in the manta goal area, and then the total number of cards in your hand, uh, all of those numbers get factored into your final total. So while you guys are figuring that out, I will mention a couple things about Aquatica, the, the board game. Um, first thing to mention is, while it won't be available in stores until October 28th, we do have some units available on the Gen Con website. Uh, it's $45. The, uh, the one we have available on the Gen Con website, we were also able to get a quantity of the uh, the, there were two kings that were given out as promo cards during Essen last year when this game was initially released by Cosmodrome. Um, we were able to get a quantity of those. So if you happen to pick up a copy of the Aquatica game from the Gen Con store, you will absolutely also get those two promo cards from Essen last year. Um, other than that, uh, it's a little ways down the road, but we are wrapping up uh, getting the files ready for the expansion for this. So uh, in a few months, hopefully, we'll have it available and make sure it's in stores somewhere, possibly early next year, or if we're really lucky, it'll be really late this year. Uh, we'll have to see how the scheduling works out. And of course, with the pandemic going on, that affects all kinds of transit and no fun at all. But uh, do we have all our scores figured out? 
Okay. So based on the spread, yellow is at 55. We've got blue at 33, green at 31, and red at 23. So I hope you enjoyed the game, guys. That was super yeah. cool. Really good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What, what's, last... the, what's the expansion do, John? So the expansion is going to add a fifth player. It's also going to add another type of land. It's going to add a small selection of additional character cards. It's going to add more kings. And it also has a mechanic that, and I'm going to stop pointing at the screen. It also has a mechanic, a mechanic that uh, replaces the goal oriented. And what you end up doing is you start hiring lords into your kingdom. So they have special functions and you actually end up spending uh, your scored lands to hire these lords instead of having this goal-based mechanic. Mm, these, mm. these tokens that uh, yellow is manipulating up here, these are, once we're past the base game, you can shuffle these up, and these each have new goals that you can attempt to, to achieve in the game. So oh, like, that's awesome. During Gen Con, because we've only been teaching the basic game, um, it's almost, it's every time it has ended, it has ended because somebody filled all the goals out. Well, some of these goals are pretty tough. Um, the, uh, let's see here, uh, hiring a character with, with, that costs five coins is one. Having uh, four lands, one from each location in your scoring pile is another one. So these can really extend the gameplay where now suddenly it is a potential that mm -hmm. the character deck, which currently only has four cards left in it, could run out and so on. Right, um, right. The, if you get really curious about the expansion, Cos Cosmodrome actually has covered it on their Twitch channel as well. So that is, if you want to see it in greater detail, that'll certainly happen there. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I have to admit, um, I always, I always like seeing what expansions do, but seeing the expansion for this one, I, I already love Aquatica and how it plays, but I am definitely excited to get my hands on a, on a copy for, for my personal mm. library once that's, once that's available. Because that fifth player, I, the interactions just only get better. So it's, it's excellent. That's cool. John, John, you said this is available in the Gen Con store now and in retail in October. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it's at the Gen Con store now, and then October 28th, it should be available in your local retail store, which we're happy with whatever way is best for you to buy it, please go ahead. Um, <laughs> but the Gen Con store, just to repeat, the Gen Con store now does have the promo cards available. All right. So, thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, and I, I know we're at the, the end of Gen Con almost here, but it's been a weird one. But hey, we at least got to play some games, and I really do appreciate that. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, and I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Very cool game. You're welcome. Thank you all. Take care, and have a, have a great end of your show.